G'day, I'm Clive and welcome to CDP Outdoors. Here we're back on the Bibbleman track. And we do North Bannister to Dwelling Up. It's gonna be four days, just a nice gentle stroll. I've been walking a short while. I've crossed the Albany Highway already. And I'm just on the other side now. And I've just seen my first Wargle on this side of Albany Highway. All right, so it's good four or five hundred meters in, and it's on this old burnt tree. Let's show you. There it is. Okay, time is 8 a.m. A bit of a late start for me today, it was. The date is September the 3rd, 2020. Ah, oh, how good it is to be out here. Still cold, temperature's about five degrees centigrade. Still worth being out here. Some of us have a runny nose from the cold. Excuse the sniffing. All right, the pack I'm using today is one I've used in the last few videos which is the Raid Mark III from Tasmanian Tiger. <clears throat> it's a 52 litre pack. It's not the lightest so if you want the lightest don't have this one. And if you like counting your grams put your fingers in your ears because at the moment the pack in total weighs about 18 and a half kilograms that has got about one and a half kilograms worth maybe two of batteries uh, power blocks and bits of bobs for filming uh, what I'm thinking of doing when I do the collie or the dwelling up to collie section is use one of my lightweight packs for the first three days but then I'll have to be picked up from the, is it the Harvey Quindanin Road? So I can be back in time for work. And then I'll get dropped back off at the same point. And I'll probably have back to this pack. Or I might even just finish that section with the, the lighter pack I've got, which is about half the weight of this one I've got in here, because this one, empty weighs 2.9 kilos and I've got four small pouches added on which probably add close to uh, three quarters of a kilo three six nine no probably a kilo excuse the sniffing again so before I put anything in here you've got nearly four kilos in weight but this pack if you don't mind a little bit of extra weight and you like the comfort it's a very comfortable pack so one day i'll do a complete breakdown review of this pack because it's so handy there's so many different ways you can use it uh, i'm going to carry on to whitehorse hills campsite It is 8.20 a.m. and I'm already five kilometers in. So that's that leave 11 kilometers until I get to the Whitehorse Hill shelter. I'm gonna sl slow down a bit. <sighs> what shelter am I using tonight? Well, I've brought a hammock out with me and it's one from a Australian company based in Tasmania called Tear Gear. And I've got their 
Gosshawk hammock, which is a hammock with a bug net on. So I'm going to be using that for the next three nights while I'm out here. I usually use my, uh, I just remember what it's called now, <laughs> Torrid Jungle Hammock, which is a smaller hammock. And I usually use a DD Super Light bug net over that. But I decided to give this one a go. And what am I going to be using to keep warm? I hear some of you thinking or saying. I have a down top quilt from Hammock Gear, which is an American company. And I also have a matching down under quilt. And both are rated to minus seven degrees centigrade. And I've been out in it when it's got in the minus numbers and I've been toasty warm. And it compresses down both uh, top and bottom quilt. I've got it in a 20 litre compression sack and it's squashed down to about eight or nine litres and it could go further. So it's not taking much space in the pack. But as soon as I get to the shelter, I'll put my hammock up and I'll get them out so the loft can puff up. Mosquitoes are about, if you're wondering. Even though it's still fairly cold, the little buggers are already flying around. Excuse the panting, seven kilometers in, and we just got to the first serious incline. Now that's a bloody big hill. Uh, as you can see that mount down behind me. We just climbed up that. Uh, and I've got one of my walking poles out to help me up. So walking poles. Yes, I carry walking poles. A lot of the time I don't use them until I get to a situation like this and if I'm doing any filming I'll be using one but if the hill's too big I'll use both poles and then just get the camera out when needed uh, I bumped into one chap so far heading in the same direction He's nearly at the top of the hill by the looks of it because he's out of sight. And the poor bugger is hit about what keeps coming undone. I think it's going to need replacing. I've taken my hoodie off from a sword. <coughs> It's great from temperatures from about zero to five or six. And then with walking and carrying a pack, especially start, once you start going up hills, it needs to come off because it's just too, too warm. And it's like a sauna inside. So just down to my hiking shirt. Okay, there's Benoming Hill. There's a spur trail just a little bit further down the, tr the track and it's 400 meters they say up to the hill and back down. Uh, today I'm going to give it a miss and I'll come back another day and uh, specifically 
just walk to the top of the hill, do some filming. I might even attempt to get a sunset and a sunrise and then walk back. Uh, apart from the Benaming Hill, I think we're basically at the top of this one. Uh, I have to stay flat for a little bit and then we'll be heading back downhill and then back uphill and then back downhill. But it's still beautiful out here. Have enough of you. Isn't that fantastic? Just walked up there. There's Benemin Hill and by the looks of it this is where the spur trail leads you up to the top of Benemin Hill all the way up there. Like I said I'll come back and do that another day. So I'm going to carry on that way looking at that beautiful scenery through the trees there. Benaming Hill uh, to the Spur Trail is I believe the 8 kilometre point so we're uh, halfway for today so another half uh, 8 kilometres to go so those are working miles we've done 5 miles and we've got 5 more miles to go until we get to camp but I'll just go and enjoy that beautiful view and just take my time so at this rate, it should be in camp by about 1.30, 2 o'clock. Unless I stop, then maybe a little bit later. A few rocky bits going down here, take it easy. Use my pole to stabilise myself. And then carry on. So, see you shortly. I think I've said it before in previous videos, but water on the Bibbulmun Trek at this time of the year when we've had a lot of rain you will get some streams running but the further we go into summer then streams will just dry up and disappear so make sure you're carrying enough water to last your journey between shelters and shelters and then sometimes the shelters have run out so do your best to carry as much water as possible and make it last the, the best idea I've found now uh, is work out how much water I drink and I carry roughly two days worth when we get into the summer time I still do very similar over the winter just as practice uh, to get used to carrying the weight but on this section is where I collapse with severe dehydration and I had to press my emergency uh, locator my tracker, my spot that's where I got my trail name from, spot because of it 
and I had to be rescued by the Jandakot air wing. Twelve kilometres in now, so that's four kilometres to go. And between here and the shelter, if I remember rightly, is one bloody big hill. Yeah, that's part of the journey, isn't it? The more you climb up, the more views you get to see. I don't know if you can see as well. Uh, unless you stop, you don't get to see these tens of thousands of pale yellow flowers everywhere. So here we are, this is roughly the spot that dehydration got me. Uh, that was the view I was able to look at whilst waiting for the chopper to come and rescue me. It's, I can't remember how many years it is now since I had to be rescued from here but I can still remember it, the feeling, watching the chopper just flying around over there, just zoning in on me. And I was lucky I actually had a signal on my phone, so they were able to phone me and, yep, still got signal here, three bars now. So I was able to direct them in towards where I uh, exactly was. So, just sitting here and then hearing somebody shout at me from that direction. Just felt like wonders. And it just take you for the short walk up to where the chopper was. <sighs> On the day it happened, it didn't feel like a short walk. The two rescue guys came down, one grabbed my pack and the other one walked with me just to make sure I didn't collapse again and they get, get feeding me water to get my hydration up slowly and at this point I could hear the chopper I couldn't see it at the time it was just there and I actually saw it up on the outcrop up there and it was like watching a scene out of Mission Impossible he, there's nowhere flat for him to actually land, so it's basically hovering with just one skid touching the the rock. Uh, such an amazing feeling for these guys, or well, for me to see these guys, and just such a friendly voice. Uh, let's get through here nearly there <clears throat> I could actually feel the wind off the chopper's blades at this point it wasn't so overgrown then like I said, it was a few years back now. And now you can see exactly how skilled these pilots are. Oh. 
the guy took my uh, pack first and loaded it in the chopper or the second chap was stood with me now I remember him leading me up uh, remember right here this way No, it wasn't. He, he led me up around the other side, around the front of the chopper and into the side door on here, this side. <sighs> now look at that view. And like I said, when the chopper took off, the sun was just beginning to set. So over that direction, where am I? There, I believe. Yep, is Mandra. The sun was setting over there. And we headed up that direction. And we could see a lightning storm north of Perth. It was as if Mother Nature had just put a show on for me to say, here Clive, you're still alive. It was fantastic. And again, I can't thank these guys enough. All oh, first responders, whether you're the Perth uh, Jandakot Air Wing, ambulance service, police, doctors, nurses, fire brigades, every single one of you. Thank you. Thank you very much from the bottom of my heart. Okay, 20 past one, and about 1.4 kilometers to go. So, oh, get these tired legs moving, shall we? Oh, so I stood still. My feet are aching now, bugger. Shouldn't have stopped. What a fantastic view back there, look at it. Isn't that great? Right, keep moving Clive. As soon as you can get there you can sit down and then throw your hammock up and get ready to fall asleep. Oh that's hard work climbing up there, sore feet. Oh here we go, on the move again. nearly at the shelter and it's going to be more than welcome for me I need to be able to sit down and loosen my boots off and I think one of my socks have uh, got tucked off around my big toe and I can feel the blister forming I think I have to get a bit of fix some oil on that so I'll be getting any worse oh, I could just see the and is that the shelter or the dunny I can see? But I can see a wooden structure or corner of one. But if the dunny's there, the shelter's there. It's one of the best sites you can get when you're on the track. There's a shelter right up there through the trees. So that must be the dunny I saw over there. And if you don't, don't know what a dunny is, is a drop toilet, an outdoor toilet. So there we are, 16 kilometers. And there's the shelter. And the chap I met along the way sitting there having something to eat, I think, by the looks of it. I'll turn the camera back round in case he doesn't want to be filmed. Today's walk was really good, I really enjoyed it. And like I said, each time I've done this, something's happened. So up to now, fingers crossed, I'll get all the way to dwelling up without anything happening. Just having a nice walk and a good time.
But yeah, like I said, I've really enjoyed it. You've got a couple of uh, steep bits, inclines and declines, and a fair bit of flat. But coming in weight and not being out for three or four months, I'm aching. My feet are sore. So, on that note, I hope you've enjoyed the video. And if it's the first time you've been to my channel, please go down below and click on the subscribe button. Click the notification bell next to it. Click the like button and share it with all your mates. And if you are already a subscriber, again, I thank you very much.